Hi, this is the uh, first of the day one notes for our unit seven, which is on polygons and quadrilaterals. Today, we're going to be talking about the properties of polygons. Um, before we get going, it might be helpful to know what that word means. Uh, we've talked about it before, and, and we'll just rehash it again real quick. If you look at the prefix of the word poly, poly just means many, okay? And gons refers to faces. So we have many faces or basically many sided shapes. That's what we're dealing with. We're going to stick with two dimensional shapes in this unit. Um, later on, we'll get into quadrilaterals and you might be able to guess, hey, quad right there probably gives something away. How many sides is that going to have, right? Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later. But this first video is basically just to introduce some definitions and just to, uh, to get the basics out of the way so we can go and we can do stuff and we can figure out some calculations and some angles and some side lengths, things like that later on, okay? So... Um, first things first, what is a polygon? A polygon, by definition, is an enclosed figure that has three or more straight sides. Okay, so, so the important parts of that definition that I just listed are as follows. First of all, you have to have at least three or more straight sides. In other words, you can't have like a football shape for multiple reasons. See, if I have a football shape, that's the only way that I can think of an enclosed shape, right? It has to be enclosed. That means something like a U-shape would not work, right? Let's see if I can come down here. Okay, a football is not going to work because the sides are curved. So no, that is not a polygon. A U-shape, not a polygon. You know why? Because it's not enclosed. Okay, the figure has to have all straight sides. All of them have to be straight. So even if I went like this, does not count. Not a polygon, okay? But if I go with something like this, and it doesn't matter whether the sides are the same length or anything like that, okay? Those are all those are all straight sides on that. That is a polygon, okay? It's enclosed. It has more than three sides, and all sides are straight. So, got that out of the way. There are some common polygons. There are lots of them. In fact, they're, they're an indefinite the number of them. I mean, they, they go on forever. We, uh, we have names for some of them, but after a while... It just gets to be where there'd be so many names to memorize that we just stop, okay? We have a three-sided polygon, okay, that we call that the triangle. Four-sided is quadrilateral. I'll let you go on through those because most of them you already know. You might want to put a little star next to this one. That's one that's commonly missed. The heptagon, memorize that one. That's a seven-sided shape. Nano means nine. Deca means 10, and dodeca means 12. If we go beyond that, if we have like a 17-sided shape, we usually just call it a 12-gon or something like that. So then it's going to look a little bit weird, but N be replaced with a number. So like a 12-gon or a 22-gon or something. We just need to know how to name them, though. Okay, so if you see the word hexagon, now you know I'm talking about a six-sided polygon. All the sides are straight. The side is The, the shape is enclosed. If you need to, pause this. I'm going to go ahead and go on. So, knowing that the polygon is an enclosed figure and has three or more straight sides, we have what are called regular and irregular polygons. Okay, And to be a regular polygon, that means that it not only it's one that is both equilateral, Okay, that means all sides are the same length, right? So I could say this, if I went down to this diagram down here of the regular polygon, I'm saying I could put a tick mark here and here and here and here and here, okay, if I know it's regular. So regular doesn't like, oh, he's just a regular old Joe, right? It doesn't mean like, oh, it's just your average polygon. No, regular means something special in geometry class. So pay attention to that. When you see the word regular show up in your problems, know that it means something more than just, hey, it's your average, it's your average shape. Okay, it's equilateral, it means all the sides are the same length, and if you see that it's equiangular, that means all the angles are the same. So I could then go through if I wanted to, let's see if this shows up, if it's dark enough, and I could put angle markings, with tick marks, here, 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 here. Okay, so this would be called then, there are one, two, three, four, five sides, that is a regular pentagon. All it takes to be considered irregular, then, would be that one of those two requirements isn't met. So, if any of the angles is different from the others. In this case, you can see, like, look how wide this angle is here compared to this little angle over on the left, right? If I compare those two angles, they're obviously different, okay? That's an irregular polygon. 
Okay, pay attention to that because the word regular is sneaky. It's a sneaky word that shows up in the middle of problems and descriptions of polygons that's easy to gloss over because it doesn't mean the same thing in a regular setting. Regular here means all sides the same, all angles the same. Very important. We have within polygons what are called diagonals. And a diagonal is a line that you could draw that would connect any two non-consecutive vertices, meaning that there's two points on the polygon that are not next to each other. Now, on this diagram here, I only have a few of them marked. I want you to know that there are more, okay? But, like, here's an example of one vertice that would exist in a quadrilateral. Notice, by the way, triangle doesn't have any because the triangle, this point, is next to the, both of the other two points in the polygon. But with the quadrilateral, I could connect across here. So it's basically any line that could cut across the shape, right? Um, just to give you an example, I want you to see here that this isn't drawn, but from this point over here, I mean, I could draw a diagonal from here down to this point. There's another one, right? So I, I want you to just know that these are not all the diagonals by any means, but there's just some examples of diagonals. Notice what they do. Diagonals cut the polygons into triangles. Why would that be important? Don't you feel like we spent a lot of time talking about triangles so far? So maybe if we can take a polygon that doesn't, that doesn't look like a triangle at all, but I can cut it into small triangles? Oh, okay, now I can work with something, right? Now I can start to use my, my knowledge of triangles to solve problems later, right? So keep that in mind. That is worth writing down at the bottom of your handout that I gave you. Diagonals cut the polygon into triangles. We have concave and convex polygons. It's another way to classify it. If I can take a diagonal and I can draw it between two non-consecutive vertices and it goes outside the shape, then I have what's called a concave polygon. This is an example of a concave four-sided polygon, so I call it a quadrilateral. If, there's, if it's not possible, then, to draw a diagonal outside of the shape, then it's called a convex polygon. The easiest way that I can think of to, to remember these two as a memory device, okay, I'm looking for an easy way to remember which way is concave and which way is convex. Well, let's say that I had a mountain here, okay? So here I'm a mountain range, and let's say there was a cave in the mountain. Well, you know what the cave would do? The cave would cut into the mountain, would it? Wouldn't this be the cave portion of the mountain? So notice then, if I think of that that way, like a cave cuts into stuff, well, a concave, think about it like this. Look at that. I've got like a cutout, don't I? It goes, it dips into the shape. It forms like a cave shape on the posterior of it. So that's the best way that I can think of to remember, but it is worth your time to memorize the difference between concave and convex quadrilaterals. Now, after we get out of this unit, all of our work is going to be done with convex quadrilaterals. Not quadrilaterals, I'm sorry, polygons. Quadrilateral is the one that's on the page, okay? It's a type of polygon. The reason that we're going to stick mainly to convex later on is because we know a lot of stuff about convex polygons, okay? But we do need to know the distinction between the two. So have this different definition memorized, ready to go. Remember, caves cut into mountains, so concave, we have a dipping into that shape, okay? And then let's do a couple of examples, okay? So each polygon, are they irregular or regular? Are they concave or convex? And then we'll be done with the first video, and then I've got a couple more quick videos just doing a few calculation problems. Well, first things first. In order to be regular, it has to be both equilateral and equilangular. Okay? So even though this rectangle looks like it's a very regular shape, meaning that it looks very simple, okay? if I'm thinking like, ah, it's just your average shape, see, that's the bad definition of regular. A regular shape, regular means equilateral. And notice how these two sides here are not the same, okay? So I know that this is irregular. Over here, all the sides are the same length, all the angles are the same. Therefore, it is regular. Hope you guys like my color coding here, huh? Over here, all the sides the same, all the angles the same. Well, it looks like all the sides are the same length. Looks like all these angles are the same. But you know what? That's irregular. You know why? Because you forget, I also have angles in here, and here, and here, and here. And we can definitely tell that those angles I just marked 
those are not the same as the ones out here, are they? Right. So that's an irregular shape. So it, it does have the equilateral sides. It does not meet the equiangular requirement. Now, let's talk about concave and convex. Here, I see no parts of the diagram which kind of dip into it. I see no caves that cut into the diagram. So this is considered to be a convex polygon. I wouldn't be able to connect this line, this point, in other words, to any other line across here, this across here. There are no diagonals that I could draw outside of the shape. Same thing happens over here. I have no way to draw a diagonal from here to any other point, any other vertice, without going inside the shape. So it is a convex polygon. But over here, see, I, I forget this is one of the points. I know you want to just look at these four on the outside, but here's a point. Here's another point that's not next to it. And guess what? I could draw a line right here. So that tells me then that this is a concave, irregular polygon. Okay, that makes sense. Just some basic definitions and stuff like that. Be prepared to use those in the following videos and in the future days of, the, of our unit together. Okay? Uh, but that's it for the first day of polygon. No, it's not for the first day, excuse me, for the first video of the first day of Polygon. So stick around. You know there's another one coming on this playlist.